Hey, what's up? And welcome to this episode of EST, the podcast for established church leaders by established church leaders. My name is Josh King. My name is Sam. It's hot outside because it's summertime Ooh. in Florida. It's of course, you said it was hot time. your way too. Are we going to talk about the weather? I mean, I guess we could. It feels like 110 right now. And so it is hot. I don't. We don't have as much humidity as you do, but we do have humidity quite a bit. Uh, right now, I think we're sitting at 60% humidity and feels like 110. It's it's brutal out there. It is brutal. Yeah, we, we usually sit at like 95% humidity. Yeah. Y'all can have that. Y'all can have that. All right, I so like who's, our, like who's our sponsor for today? Same sponsor as always. Mm -hmm. Thank you, church teams. They've been with us a while now. We're grateful to Boyd and his crew. They do a lot of good for churches. Um, they... They have church management software. So you need to go to est.church and check out the offer. Two months free. So there's really no risk here. And fill out the form. They'll be glad to answer any questions that you have. Uh, they really do it all. Um, they, they do texting. They do online giving, scheduling, process management. Really, if, if, it, if, it, if it's an operations side, if it's part of the operations of the church, they do it. So uh, they got cheap plans starting at $37 a month for churches under 200 people. You can add text to church for $10 and online giving for an extra 20 a month. And uh, they're, they're just awesome to work with. You'll get incredible service. So go to est.church. Check out church teams in the offer there. You can also look them up on the Googles. Uh, I'm sure Boyd and his crew will be glad to walk you through any questions that you have. So thank you, church teams, for sponsoring the show. All right. We've got a really great topic today. We've um, This came through just a personal exploration on myself tweeting out, how many standing meetings do you have, pastors? And I want to make a couple caveats here. We're going to talk a lot about like improving the meetings you do have, simplifying the meetings you have, maybe reducing your meetings and how to get the most out of them. But before we do, let's um, let's draw some lines of distinction. I am not referring to worship services. Worship services are different. They're a part of the job. We get that. And you really can't reduce those. <laughs> You've got what you got, right? You got at least one a week. So you need to do that. Then you also have... Uh, small groups. So you're in a small group, that sort of stuff. I am primarily talking about administrative type of meetings in which you carry sort of a key role in it. Now, let's say this could be a finance team, a, a personnel team. I serve on our state's denominational sort of team for sexual abuse reform and response. So that's a that's a that's a meeting. It's a thing that I have to prepare for. I have to go into. And so I add those up and I come up to right at 12 currently, and we are in talks of adding two more. We'd be right at 14. Um, Sam, with those same sort of distinctions, how many meetings are you running a month? Well, I, I saw your tweet, and then I just did a quick count in my brain, and I came to roughly 12 as well. Mm. Uh, maybe slightly less in the summer because our committees – Unless they need to. They don't really meet in the summer. Our deacons take uh, July off from their meetings. So mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. about, but you know, generally, I'd say about 12. Yeah, and uh, somebody else brought up another great point on the, um, the Twitters. One was this, in, in seasons in which we're hiring, that can grow exponentially easily within a month. One hire can produce five additional meetings that I have to be at, that I have to be a part of, that I have to pre prepare for and then go and do. You and I were even talking before the show, and we're going to share this a little bit later. There's actually this way in which, so some people may hear us go, 12 meetings, that's not that bad. Okay, well, let's do a little math here. On average, you got 4.2 weeks out of the week or out of the month. There's two days off, so you've got five days, five times four. That's 20 days, 20 work days. We're talking 12 to 14 meetings. That is a lot that prepare for this. And what we're going to share a little later on in the show is to do those meetings effectively, you actually have to double the number. And yeah. the way this takes you out of a lot of these meetings, because we're churches, we work with lay people. Uh, a lot of these meetings happen in the evenings. When you start doing the actual kind of like wrapping your brain around what we're talking about when we're talking about meetings here, 
it can, it can, it can grow exponentially. So I think the first question I would have for you, Sam is, and this is going to be totally shooting from the hip. What's a good, healthy number. Do you think 12 is a good number? I'm feeling like that's stretching me a little thin. Uh, okay. So I like meetings because Mm -hmm. I enjoy being around my people. So there's a few perspectives here and I will answer your question. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'll, I'll get to it. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to ruminate on this idea for a little bit first. Though. Do it. Do it. Uh, I, I think if you set them up with the proper expectations, the proper length and, y- you know, you're planning ahead. Again, these are standing meetings we're talking about. You, you may have way more than that in any given week or month because people just need to meet. These are ongoing meetings um, for the operations of the church. For a church our size, you know, we we average 600 a week. Um, yeah, I think that's about – I think that's about right. Um, but I like them. I enjoy them. I, I, I enjoy – you know, I don't <laughs> – I don't open every meeting with the devotional. You know, they're not heavy meetings. These are not exhausting to me. Uh, we're covering the basics of the operations of the church. Mm-hmm. Um, we need new air conditioners. We got this big air conditioning project coming up, so we got to have meetings to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we have uh, some insurance issues because of a hurricane. You know, well, we're gonna have to have some meetings to talk about it uh, because we're congregational, and the congregation has to have input into what happens in the church. Uh, so I'm glad to have a lot of people involved. I'm glad to have these meetings. Um, you know, I meet with my deacons, the other office of the church. Um, so I'd say it's about right for me. Mm -hmm. Um, now if you're a bivocational pastor, a sole pastor, that would be exhausting if you, if you had that many meetings, Mm -hmm. but you know, I'm, you know, I'm co-vocational and my church gives me some time to run my business, but, um, I have a lot of flex hours. So for me, it's, it's not an issue. Mm. Um, I enjoy, I enjoy the interaction, but I have a healthy church, man. I mean, my people are in a good place. I have a lot of unity. So when I walk into a room, it's laughter. It's uh, Hey, all right, what's next? Let's get this done. Kind of attitude. Uh, there's not a whole lot of agendas. In fact, right now there's none. Nobody really has this agenda they're trying to get through. So I would say it's right for me. Um, mm-hmm. But if you're in a tougher church, I can see why you would want to be like, I think four is plenty for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and and let me say I I agree with you in principle that more people involves a good thing. You want to have um, it just for nothing but be- nothing more than just buy in. I think this is a good thing. I just I think I was exploring. I wasn't. I didn't even have an agenda to the tweet. It was more just I'm curious. I'm thinking about adding this. What would be a good level there? I do think that if you have good systems and structure in place, like. Uh, Let's say you have standing committees, like let's say you have a buildings and grounds team. They need to know exactly their lane to run in. That makes meetings a little bit better. Um, And and if everybody knows where they're going and and the lanes they need to run in, that helps a lot. If that's not in place, if there's distrust in place, if there's um, agendas, like you said, and it it turns into these like just monthly wars, um, those can be really exhausting and taxing. I'll also say things like, the fact that you know you you went to you have a business background and and that's sort of, you bring that into the table for those like me who I went to seminary and um, I I know you went to seminary as well but I just went to Bible college seminary and then doctoral I I know the Bible I can have meetings all day long about the Bible and preaching when I got to sit in meeting after meeting after meeting about HR or insurance or finance that can be really taxing because it's using a side of me that's ill prepared. You know what I mean? Or yeah, I th- left prepared. Ex- excellent point. Um, which no knock against, you know, how God called you. But if you have a choice, get some marketplace training because you're going to need to know human resources and mm-hmm. policies and procedures. You're going to need to know finance. You're going to need to know how to read financial statements. I will go so far as to say, and I've said this before, but I believe this. If you don't know the difference between a balance sheet and an income statement and how to read them, at least mm-hmm. basics, you really should not be a pastor. <laughs> I mm, mean, you're going to need it. In today's world, these are critical things um, to understand how a church operates. Um, and, and there's some YouTube, if you're like, oh my goodness, I don't know. Well, there's some YouTube videos out there. It'll take you 
a couple hours to to watch something go okay i get it now um so it's not that difficult uh but yeah i bring a business side of this uh into the church um i would not change that for anything uh and i would encourage anyone if they have the option yeah get some marketplace training so that you know these things aren't foreign to you uh right. when when you go through them mm -hmm. yeah so those are things okay so let's break this down a little bit uh the first thing what do you got on the agenda? We have some sections here. What's the first one? Yeah. Um, what? Let's talk about maximizing the ones you need and that's, that's reducing the ones you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So here, here, let's just talk about maximize. Well, no, let's talk about reducing because we need to reduce first and then maximize what we're left with. Um, so reducing the meetings that you have. I've got two helps. I wonder... And for those of you who are new to the show, Sam and I don't schedule any of this out. We're just talking and you get to <laughs> hey, pull up a seat. Your drink will be here in a minute. And uh, we're going to talk about this. Okay. So do you, do you ever go back and like someone makes a comment about something about an, in yeah. an episode in the past and you're like, yeah, I kind of regret saying that because we really don't <laughs> plan any of this. I've had oh. a few moments like that where I'm like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have said it or I shouldn't have said it that way. And then it's not, like, but it's on the air now. So it's done. Yeah, yeah. Not specifically, but I don't even want to think about how, I mean, this has been what, seven years. It's been a long show. Mm -hmm. So anyways, okay, let's reduce some of the meetings. Here's the first, my first tip is this. Think through the standing meetings that you have and whether or not you still need to have them. So here's what I mean. Here's a super key kind of idea. Everybody knows that a church with multiple staff and multiple leaders is going to need some sort of calendaring meeting. You need to have a meeting in which you're all on the same page as far as a calendar is concerned. You also probably as a pastor, you want to invest in those that you lead in various levels. So you're going to have to have some meetings where you're shepherding, where you're loving, those sort of things. There's probably some developmental meetings that you're going to need to where you're talking with a team or a person and saying, here's how you could improve. Here's how we could improve. Okay. When I say that, immediately in your mind, you're going, oh, well, shoot fire. You know, if we have, we have, if we have one calendaring meeting a week, that's four a month. If I have two staff members, that's eight a month developmental. So eight, 12. And then if we have, uh, what was the other one? Shepherding. That's another eight. I'm already, okay, let me encourage you in this way. You don't need to have a calendaring meeting every week. What changed between Monday and the next Monday so much that y'all have to have another calendaring meeting? I don't know. You, you just have to remind the worship pastor. <laughs> or, or yeah, there's it's not our worship pastor, but there are people on staff that you go with. <laughs> Bro, we talked about this like literally three days ago. Uh, you know? <laughs> no, wait, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you not write that down? <laughs> yeah, I saw you. You were there. We made a joke. Um, so we at Second, we have one calendaring meeting a month. We review the previous month and we look at the next two. That's enough. You don't have to say, I've been in meetings where I've been in church staffs where the entire church staff meets every week to do calendars and you go day by day, by day. L let me just share you. Everybody doesn't need to be at those meetings every week. You just need the calendaring staff or maybe everybody is there once a month. Also, you don't need to go day by day. Listen, if it's, if Wednesday night youth group meets every Wednesday night in the same room at the same time, we don't need to talk about it. Nobody needs to discuss that. It doesn't need to get brought up. So we just go week by week. If there's anything that's out of the ordinary that might cause a conflict, we don't even really need to know that the women's ministry team is meeting. That's not something that affects everybody. As long as they know that they have a meeting, great. Unless perhaps they're meeting in the sanctuary. That might, you know, cause a conflict somewhere. If they decided to meet in the third grade middle, uh, the third grade Sunday school class, that might cause a conflict. So start thinking to yourself, why are we having this meeting? So, uh, you know, we could talk more. There's probably previous episodes where we did talk about this. We have a once a month calendaring meeting. Then you have development the next week where you were having that meeting, you know, and those are shorter, 20 minutes each one. You have another, you know, that sort of stuff. So think through those. You can simplify it. I'll also say real briefly, another way to do this is you're going to have to delegate. So if you do have multiple ministers or multiple pastors on your staff, Perhaps you don't need to go to every single meeting. You just don't. Maybe you go to, like at our staff, the way we're set up, I go to deacons meetings. Our executive pastor goes to personnel team meetings and our church administrator goes to finance. That's how it's set up. We all collaborate throughout the week, but I don't have to go to those other two meetings 
because most months it's not really anything really germane or huge. They get to do that. So those are my two tips. You got any to reduce anything? Yeah, reduce the number of committees that you have. And that that'll reduce too. the number number of meetings. Yeah. Um, I think when I went to First Murray, I'm trying to remember. It was it was an absurd number, but I want to mm. say it was something like 26 standing committees in the bylaws. Right. Now, not all of them were functioning, but we were able to take several committees and over the course of a couple of years due to, you know, people rolling off and rolling on, um, combine some committees, do away with some committees. And it, it, it was a big thank you from the church, actually, because everyone was operating as if the bylaws were God's word. Mm -hmm. And because we have these 26 standing committees, then we must fill these positions mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. operate them. Um, so I would say if you want to reduce the the number of meetings, we'll start with your governance. Like that's a really big picture sort of thing. But just ask the question, do we really need all of these departments, committees, teams, whatever you call them? Mm -hmm. um, can some of the, do some of them even need to meet anymore? Do some need to be combined? Um, and that will naturally, again, you don't want to go, you know, burning bridges and getting yourself fired by, by no. changing bylaws, but uh, but that's that's one way to do it. And, and that's where I've found a lot of success. We have three committees now mm -hmm. at West Bradenton. And you know, I, I wouldn't want any fewer. Um, that That's right where we need to be. Um, and it's really helped us to to be able to uh, Let me, to to get the to get to really refine our meetings. Yeah, I'll just throw this idea out there. A lot of churches have what's called a pulpit committee when there's not a pastor. And that team is responsible for making sure that somebody's preaching each week. When you hire a pastor, you don't need to do that anymore. And so the committee just kind of goes away. That's great. We, a lot of churches have even done that. They'll have a, 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 like a buildings and grounds team. They handle things like a leaky here or whatever there. Well, once you hire a facilities staff, which we have a couple guys that are full time employed and they handle our, we don't have a buildings and grounds committee because then what would they do? That's what their job is. I would wonder though, with things like finance. Do, once you hire a full finance team, do you maybe not need that? And here's a step in between. Maybe you're saying, no, definitely, we need to have that for accountability, et cetera. I get that. But maybe what if that finance team went to a quarterly meeting instead of a monthly meeting? Because you've got people on staff that are going to, and every quarter, there's a full review, that sort of stuff. And so I'm just saying, think a little bit outside of, outside of the box. Sometimes churches just get in a rut where this is just what we've done. Well, maybe you don't have to. Yeah, I mean, our stewardship committee meets more August to November because they're preparing budget, the budget. budget. Yeah, um, and they meet a whole lot less, like January. What on earth does the stewardship committee need to do in January? Like, we don't even have like the first month's financials yet because our calendar year is a is our fiscal year is a calendar year. Uh, so the other thing to think about is. When does the work of this committee or team or department need to get done? And it may be better to have eight meetings in the fall, you know, where they are kind of stacked close together as opposed to, you know, once a month meetings spread out all over the year. Mm -hmm. um, so you can also think about just the fact that a standing meeting every month may not be necessary due to the work required from whatever group in the yeah. church, yeah. you know, it yeah. is. Um, but and you also let's, have email um, now, but yeah, well, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, let's, let's talk about this idea. Cause I thought this was really good from you. The, you, you talked about the pre meeting meeting mm -hmm. off air. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So what, do you, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Every good meeting needs to have a meeting before the meeting. Uh, and you know, some people don't like this. I'll be honest with you. There are some people that think this is manipulative. They think that this is lobbying. And to that, I would say, well, just don't lobby or be manipulative. You should never be manipulative. So just don't do it. Instead, what am I talking about here? Well, this is helpful. If you, and I just want to use, I'm going to use building and grounds because we don't have that team. And I, don't, I would never want second Baptist to think I'm talking about them. I'm not. But this is just advice. So let's say you're going to have a buildings and grounds team meeting um, coming up into Wednesday nights. 
you, I would encourage you to at least touch base. That's what we call it. Touch base with the chairman and maybe the vice chair. And if you have those positions and just go, Hey, listen, so here's the meeting coming up. Here's what I'm thinking. The agenda needs to be. Are you clear on that? Is there anything else we need to add to the agenda? Do you think, okay, great. Now here's what I, I kind of feel like to help speed the meeting along. We have five bids on the new AC unit. These three are just ridiculous. So how about we just not even bring them? I'm going to bring these two bids to the, because they're the best two bids. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. You know, you're, you're, you're helping to shape the meeting and it's for the purpose of uh, maximizing the space that you have. You've got people that are lay people usually walking in after work. Maybe they didn't get dinner, that sort of stuff. You only got an hour. So you want to maximize the time that you have there. And that can be done by agreeing with the chair on what the agenda needs to be and the direction you need to go. These meetings that I have with our chairs and stuff, they always include, yeah, we just don't know this part yet. We're just going to need to let the team discuss X, Y, Z. Make sure that you bring this picture or bring this quote. It's never like, okay, I'm going to vote for this. I'm going to say this. You make sure that this happens. That's that's not what needs to happen. But you do yourself a disservice and your meetings run long if you don't help to guide the meeting before the meeting starts. That's well within your prerogative to do. In fact, I think it's your responsibility to steward that time well because you've got people that are volunteering their time. So make sure that when they get there. Also, another clue, clue um, well, I mean, I'm just going to add, but you could add to the pre-ser- pre-meeting meeting. I would just say send the agenda out early, get it done, have standing times. Every third Wednesday is our personnel team meeting at 715 in room 207. It's just forever and for always. That's the way that it's going to go. Um, so I would say set the things that are easy, set up the agenda, have a pre-meeting meeting. What do you think about that pre-meeting meeting? Is that weird or good or? Uh, not at all weird. In fact, common practice. It has surprised me, uh, that how many churches do not do best practices when it comes to governance and committee structures. Mm -hmm. Um, just every nonprofit, we're talking United States, right? North American culture here. Uh, every nonprofit has a board. That board operates. At, at larger nonprofits, that board will have subcommittees. I serve on one at One More Child. I'm the chair of the finance committee at One More Child. Great organization. We have meetings. We have quarterly board meetings. Before those quarterly all board meetings, we have subcommittee meetings. The United States government works the same way. So mm-hmm. there is nothing wrong with the chair of the committee setting the agenda. In most cases, that's the way it's supposed to be. Now, your bylaws may dictate something a little different, Mm -hmm. but the chair of the committee sets the agenda. The chair of the committee controls the meeting, Mm -hmm. moderates the meeting. That's, Mm -hmm. That's just normal. So if you are a pastor and you're working with a chair, then talk to the chair ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Have that meeting, have that agenda ready to go. Send it out early. Do not let anyone add anything to the agenda in mm-hmm. the moment. Stick mm-hmm. to stick to what it is. Keep those meetings to, you know, right at an hour. That's about all anybody can take. Uh, and and have a very clear, um, a very clear agenda. Mm-hmm. And you set those expectations and you operate that way you'll get a whole lot more done. And when you're getting stuff done in a meeting, it's a lot more enjoyable. I think a lot of reasons that pastors get meeting fatigue Mm -hmm. is because, you know, there's like this 20 minute devotional, then everyone's got to talk about something. Then somebody's going to bring up something that doesn't pertain to what the topic is. And, you know, hour Mm -hmm. and a half, two hours later, you haven't gotten anything done and you say, okay, well, we'll just, we'll get to this at the next meeting. And, and it's exhausting. That's Mm -hmm. absolutely exhausting. So be efficient, stick to the agenda, talk to the chair ahead of time, have an understanding when you both walk into that room, what's going to happen and don't let anyone hijack it and and get some things done. And I think if you start doing that, one, you're going to have more people sign up to serve on these teams and committees because you actually get stuff done uh, and it'll be more enjoyable and the church will be better off because guess what? Things are happening now. Yeah. 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 I think you want to clearly walk in there with, um, 
you know, the, the, the questions you need answered and B if, if the chair's not this way, and this is really the chair's job, the chair's job is to keep the meeting going according to the agenda. But if the chair's not that way, maybe they're just a different personality. You need to be that way and say, great, this is a great discussion, but we really need to get back on agenda guys. Or somebody says something says that's a great discussion, but that's really an issue for the other committee to handle. So we really, we ought not discuss it in here. It's really not in our lane. And so you want to keep those things very clear and concise. Everybody will appreciate it as it goes. Um, but we, we should probably do a whole episode on committees, how to train them, how to get them. <laughs> and that kind of stuff. We're yeah, right that now does. just trying to eliminate meetings in general, but we kind of went on a committee line, but uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, and in our world, uh, which is, you know, I, I realize not all of our listeners have, you know, similar polity that we have in our churches, you know, Presbyterian church or Methodist church will operate slightly differently. Uh, but there, there's still a lot of overlap there. Um, but, but in our world, you kind of have two different lanes. You have like the committee, uh, lay lane, and then you have the staff lane. Right. Right. Um, and you know, I, I, amazingly, a lot of times those two lanes don't cross each other. They don't, I mean, mm. a lot of times the staff is not talking to the committees. The committees are not talking to the staff and, and one way to, reduce fatigue is to open up some channels of communication between the team at the church, the staff, if you have paid staff, and then your committees. And and that'll save you a lot of, a lot of heartache. Um, you know, I encourage staff w- when appropriate to c- attend committee meetings, to be there, particularly if they're, if the committee will be talking about something that will affect their ministry. Um, mm-hmm. you, you know, they may not have a vote, but a committee, unless your bylaws are just really weird, a committee can always invite somebody into the meeting mm-hmm. and have them speak to something. Uh, so, you know, I try to open up those channels of communication as much as I can between the church staff and the committee structure. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's helped. It's definitely helped. Yeah. So the bottom line, what we're trying to say here is that the pre-meeting helps. So once you've reduced down to what you need, the pre-meeting helps. If half of your meetings, so let's say like three or four of your meetings a month are these lay teams. So that means those will be doubled. Now you have eight, six or eight meetings just because you have three or four teams. Your, your, your one-on-one coaching session with one of your staff people, you don't have to have a pre-meeting for that. That's one-on-one meeting. So you don't have to have that. I also, and I'll go out on a limb here. You don't need to do a devotional at every um, meeting. Stop I, it. I preach. Stop it. Week. Don't do, do all it. Of them. <laughs> no, don't do that. You don't need another devotional at that thing. It's, um, it's, it's just, I don't know. It's, Jesus. I think you should open up in prayer and see, and, and just 100%. have the posture, posture yes. of we're going to seek God in all of this. But the whole open your Bibles to John chapter three is it's like it just get to the agenda. I mean, I love the Bible and I firmly believe it needs to be the centerpiece of everything in the church, but you don't need a devotional at every committee meeting. Yep, we have that meeting every week. This meeting is a once a month. <laughs> we already had our bri- our Bible-centered meeting it's called church. All right. And this um, this meeting is about done. We're about yeah. to adjourn. Yep. All those in favor? <laughs> Everyone raise your hands <laughs> on to the next episode. Hey, thank you, Church Answers University, for being our sponsor. Church Answers University is a fast-growing school that offers ministry training and education at a fraction of the cost of a typical degree, degree program. The school currently offers certification in Christian ministry and the certification in women's discipleship. So go check them out at churchanswers.university. I've got several people involved uh, in Church Answers University at my church. They are absolutely loving it. It is uh, a great way to train your people, particularly some of your leaders, people that teach or um, kind of have a growing role in discipleship. Um, so again, it's churchanswers.university. Uh, we have payment plans. We have discounts for groups. Uh, and oh, by the way, everyone that goes through it, your books are included. Get a whole it. volume of yep. books. Cannot beat that. Uh, so churchanswers.university. That's right. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of EST. We'll be back next week with fresh content. So I hope that you're here. I hope you subscribe. And we'll catch you next week. 